Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, May 25. On this date in 2004, WWE SmackDown was taped in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In the main event, John Cena pinned Rene Dupree in a lumberjack match. On this date in 1998, WCW Monday Nitro aired live in Evansville, Indiana. In the main event, Lex Luger and Sting defeated the Giant and NWO Sting in a tag team match. On this date in 2009, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live in Los Angeles, California. In the main event, Batista, MVP, John Cena, Jerry Lawler, and Mr. Kennedy defeated The Miz, Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, Randy Orton, and The Big Show in a 10-man tag team match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, May 25. You are listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. And uh, as you heard in the Today in Wrestling History update, that 10-man tag team match was uh, based off of a kind of personal bleep you from Vince McMahon for lack of a better term as uh, there was a bit of a, a there was a bit of, of scrutiny and uh, a rescheduling that had to be done at the last minute thanks to a double booking that occurred on this date uh, four years ago as uh, well yes as uh, as the NBA kind of crossed paths with uh, world wrestling entertainment. Uh, the Pepsi Center in Denver, uh, Denver, Colorado, was booked for both Game Four of the uh, of the NBA playoffs. Uh, I believe it was I forget it was the Eastern Conference or what Western Conference, excuse me, Western Conference, either semifinals or it may have even been the finals uh, between the Los Angeles Lakers and Denver Nuggets. And well, since the building was double booked, initially Raw was supposed to be there, and the NBA kind of strong-armed and said, nope, we're having this game here. I guess the owner, uh, Stan Kroenke, kind of caved in to the NBA and told WWE to hit the bricks. So they were left scrambling for a venue for Monday Night Raw and ended up going over to the Staples Center in Los Angeles which has earned them a bunch of goodwill since because it feels like they've had, what, every SummerSlam since then and probably a couple other pay-per-views as well. It seems like uh, at least at least twice a year there's a, a major event being held at the Staples Center and only now for the first time in four years is uh, WWE uh, pay-per-view coming back to Philadelphia for money in the bank. But in either case, the, the entire two-hour Raw was basically spent ripping on the Denver Nuggets and Stan Kroenke and uh, the owner of, uh, of the Nuggets as well as the uh, Pepsi Center. And it, it culminated with a five-on-five tag team match, which was done by the, uh, the PA announcer. Well, the, yeah, the, the ring introductions were done by the PA announcer for the Los Angeles Lakers in the Staples Center. And it was just a whole basketball theme. You know, the five baby faces all came out wearing Lakers jerseys. The five heels all came out wearing Denver Nuggets jerseys. It was just a, it, it was a whole thing that, uh, it was just kind of meant for that night. If I guess WWE had taken the high road on it and just, you know, a- accepted the fact that they had to reschedule and not kind of stick it to Denver. I don't know. Maybe they would have uh, won a little bit more in the court of public opinion. But Vince McMahon, he... He's used to holding grudges. There's not really a shock there, I know. All right, some news and notes coming your way. Uh, I I mentioned, uh, well, actually, first of all, let me mention, for those of you uh, tuning in, looking forward to Pensbury softball, Pensbury against Westchester Henderson, it was announced earlier today that the game has been called due to uh, poor field conditions, of course, from the rain stemming yesterday into the overnight this past night. So the uh, field's being unplayable. The game has been postponed. Not sure what uh, that new date is, as that hasn't yet been announced. So that means I initially thought I'd be on until about a minute from now, but got our uh, 10 minutes back thanks to Mother Nature. So that is, uh, that is good to know. Uh, now for next week, along with my predictions certain to go wrong for the Slammiversary pay-per-view, I also will air my interview with Diamond Dallas Page following that in-person session of DDP Yoga. And today actually marks 30 days 
since I've started DDP yoga, and I feel fantastic. I mean, I, I, I've felt an increase in strength and flexibility. I feel like I'm in better shape now than I was in high school. Uh, after next week's interview, I'm looking forward to speaking more at length with Paige about his career, how he started DDP yoga, and his continued efforts in bettering the lives of his friends Scott Hall and Jake the Snake Roberts. And for more information about DDP yoga, you can check it out at ddpyoga.com. And well, like I said, I'll, I'll delve even more into that next week along with the DDP interview. Uh, let's get back to the phones and then get some uh, news and notes. We've got uh, Steve from Bristol who's been hanging on. Steve, what's going on? Yeah, Paul Heyman, he disappointed me again, Brian. Let me just tell you why. It should have been Rob Van Dam. We both know why. And if he couldn't give me that, why couldn't he give me Teddy Hart? This guy, he's, Teddy Hart? The guy he brought in, is he even as good as Ryder? Well, I, I, apparently a lot of people backstage feel that he's he, he's got the talent. Triple H, of all people, is really high on him, which is why Triple H, I guess, started this program with him. Uh, right after the introduction, Triple H came out, and that led to a match later that night, which, I don't know. It, it felt like kind of a backwards push, in a sense, in that uh, the the match was more about Triple H and the, uh, I guess, it almost seemed like they were trying to revive the story that Shawn Michaels did 18 years ago with the uh, post-concussion sy symptoms and kind of collapsing in mid-match. Only I think Sean did it better back in 95. I agree. It, it, it just puzzles me. It's almost like, correct me if I'm wrong, if this guy starts to fail quick, Punk's got to come in and bail him out fast. It'll be Punk's protege. Uh, they could go in that direction. I mean, I, th I think a lot of this is just to keep Paul Heyman on camera as... We don't know when exactly Punk is coming back, and Lesnar only has X number of paid appearances, so he's out of the picture for a while until probably SummerSlam at the earliest. So, so, so basically Triple H doesn't want Rob Van Dam back in the company. That's what you're telling me. Well, on the same token, what's Van Dam going to do? Do we really, I mean, we keep talking about we want a youth movement. We want new, fresh faces. We want, we want the next... We want somebody not named Brock Lesnar, not named CM Punk, but we want somebody that Rob can bring along. He's got to bring the young guy around. Everybody well, on the same time, I mean, let's say Rob Van Dam does come in here. I mean, it, Van Dam's, what, 42, almost 43 years old? I mean, what, what kind of extended push are you going to have with him? I mean, sure, there are some guys who he, you know, since he hasn't been around in, what, three or four years, who he hasn't necessarily wrestled, but... That'll get kind of stale quickly as well. I mean, I, I think... Could they, could they pull up an ECW and make him the longest-running Intercontinental Champion for the next 23 months and then say goodbye? Like they did with the TV title in ECW? Exactly. I, I, Give him a title that nobody wants. Well, it's not a matter of nobody wants it. It's a matter of the writers have done little to make it feel important. They have they took baby steps to make the Intercontinental title look important last night on SmackDown, actually kind of putting together what looks like a pretty decent three-way feud between The Miz, Wade Barrett, and Fandango. So if you throw Rob Van Dam in that mix, it's going to mess those three guys up? Not necessarily. I think, I think personally, I think WWE should get, a, get away from kind of going to... I mean, they had success bringing The Rock back, obviously, and you know their their numbers are going to show with that as as far as WrestleMania as as it already has for Elimination Chamber and Royal Rumble. But you can only go to that well so many times. I mean, your results that Jericho had to beat that guy just to keep his job. How about a Jericho Rob Van Dam best of seven for the summer? Jericho and Rob. I, see, that's that's the thing. That'd be another fantastic match. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, at some point we have to move on from from a lot of these guys. And, and bringing them back is good if they're going to help put over the younger guys, and Jericho has certainly done a, a great job of that. Whether Rob Van Dam would also be able to do that, I don't know. I mean, maybe he still feels he can go at a high level, but... Do you think, he could, do you think if uh, Paul Aiken or Paul could bring him back and help this young guy, put this young guy over... Does that reinstate Rob Van Dam and Triple H's eyes? Saying, hey, hey, Paul, I'm the guy that made you. Now, why are you bringing this new guy in to replace me? There's your angle. Eh, I, I don't know. I'm, 
I, I mean, uh, while we're at it, why don't we, you know, bring, why don't we see what Ric Flair's doing, get him back in the ring, you know what I mean? At some point, you have to, you know, you have to move on from these guys. There's a reason why the ratings are down. These young guys can't carry it. Is it because the young guys can't carry it, or is it because the people who are on top and have been for a while continue to be overexposed? See, that's why you bring that's why you bring him in to shake everything up. Saying, "Uh oh, I just lost. Uh oh, I just this Rob Van Dam. They're getting a strange push." And then you don't have to sign him for five years. You can just sign him for one year. Rob Van Dam. You ever notice when he comes back, he always shakes things up in the office and in the locker room. He's not what you call a team player. Exactly, and when when the team already seems to be down, why do you want to bring that much? You want to bring, that, you want to bring him in the wild, the locker room up, saying, "Okay, I'm I'm changing. I'm going to do what I, you know. That's what you got to do." Because mm -hmm. right now, I, I'm looking at WWE, and I I don't I'm just wondering, other than the cable networks, you have, when's the last time you saw a main event? NBC dropped them like uh, bad. So I'm just wondering how much how much longer can Vince keep throwing this stuff out? I don't know, but uh, if, if things get too bad, we might have to expand to four hours of Raw just to satisfy the shareholders. Oh, my God. You know, it's a good thing those wrestlers aren't paid on based on profit sharing or they'd all be homeless. You know that, right? Yeah, pretty much. All right, man. All right. I'm looking that forward to this Diamond Dallas page thing. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've got plenty to say about it. And, it, and he initially, like, he, he wanted, I wanted to do a longer interview with him. He said, uh, you know, come back to me after you've done it for a month. And, and I've got, like, a completely different perspective on it than having just tried it out initially. So I'll see what I can do about getting him for a longer interview. But at least I have the, uh, the, the post-workout five-minute interview. That's all right. But, I mean, if you ever get him on a long interview, ask him about the three letters and why he almost quit the business. The three letters and why he almost quit the business. NWO almost forced him out of that company. Hmm. All right, I'll, I'll have to see. Uh, yeah, I'll, well, I, I can't ask too many hard-hitting questions, no, but I'll see what I can do about throwing that one out there. Ask him why that group particularly hated him. <laughs> Interesting. Stuff. Have a good one, Russell. All right, thanks so much for the call, Steve. I appreciate it. Yeah, Steve, uh, Steve brings some interesting points and... Uh, He's a huge Rob Van Dam guy, uh, and, and I get that, but uh, I don't know. You can only be at the top for so long, and I think uh, WCW proved that uh, a little overexposure at the top, not necessarily a good thing. All right, we got a couple minutes here for some uh, hit, quick hits, tidbits, news, notes, things of that nature. All right, first of all, WWE working with the NFL. Yes, WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross meeting with the NFL Players Association in hopes of developing a program that would funnel NFL players to WWE developmental. Uh, as he told Jim Miller and Alex Marvez on uh, Sirius XM NFL Radio, everybody doesn't make the 53-man roster. Some guys are going to be looking for work, and we've got some job openings. Maybe we can put the synergies of those two entities together and create something wonderful someday. I mean, football crossing over into wrestling, and it's nothing new. It's, it's been around for, gosh, probably 50 years at least. I mean, going back to, what, the big cat Ernie Ladd. I mean, and there, there are a number of different examples. I mean, the different football players who, uh, who, who uh, came over into that battle royal, you know, in 86, for example, WrestleMania II, you know, Bill Fralick, William the Refrigerator Perry. You look back to the 90s with WCW, Steve Mongo McMichael, Reggie White, Kevin Green. So, I mean, and other football players who have transitioned over to wrestling. I mean, uh, uh, Lex Luger was a, was a football player at first, played in the CFL for a little bit. Ron Simmons, a uh, defensive tackle from, uh, from Florida State University. The Rock, University of Miami. Granted, he had the, uh, the family history, third generation and all that, but there's a lot of football crossover into wrestling. I mean, even, you know, even going to, like, high school and middle school, you have people who play on the football team in the fall, and then they wrestle in the winter. So, I mean, granted, that's, that's scholastic wrestling as opposed to professional, but there's always been that football and wrestling synergy, and I'm definitely on board with the move. little video game news. Next WWE video game to be re released for next-gen consoles. WWE 2K14, the first WWE game produced by 2K Sports since buying out THQ may be available for the next generation PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles, but will not be available for the Wii U console. The game is scheduled for release for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on October 29th, 
with any next-gen console releases dependent on the release of those consoles. So we'll see. We'll see if they have features that will actually make it worthwhile, too. That's the other thing. And even Vince McMahon joking about the Miguel leg drop gaff. In case you missed it, this past Sunday at the Billboard Music Awards, music artist Miguel had his performance go viral as in an attempt to jump over members of the audience from one section of the stage to another. His jump landed just short, and he delivered what essentially was a leg drop to two audience members. Vince McMahon even chimed in on the gaff, tweeting, Miguel should leave the high flying to the WWE superstars. And finally, Mania topping a million buys. The preliminary WrestleMania 29 pay-per-view buys total is 1,048,000 buys, according to the latest monthly business figures released by WWE last night. The official total will be released with the second quarter 2013 earnings sometime in August. Once all of them are accounted for, it'll probably round up to about 1.1 million buys. That's going to do it for me. Thanks to Nick Cataldi for uh, chiming in. Thanks to all your calls. Appreciate all the support. And again, don't forget, check out George's Cards and Collectibles. they got some great stuff coming up over the course of the next couple of months. Looking forward to it. And looking forward to being back with you next week for Pro Wrestling Weekly here on WBCB. Fourteen ninety WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton.